In the FA500 Furion kit, RVAC silencer kit, we have a few components in here. We'll kind of show you what we have. We started with a, a base plate that comes in here. Next, we'll have the filter assembly, foil tape, the screws, all of, so that's all the hardware you need to install it. And finally, we'll have the cover with the silencing material inside here. Uh, so really all you need to provide to finish this kit install is going to be a screwdriver and some time. You know, it really takes about 15, 20 minutes to, to install the kit itself, but we're gonna show you up inside here that there's gonna be some maintenance that typically needs to be done with all of these ACs. Uh, then we're gonna be doing some resealing, making sure the ductwork's wide open, clear. We have a free sensor that makes sure it's installed if it's, if it's on this unit. So we're gonna go through all that too. Um, this is something that needs to be done uh, on all AC units, by the way. It's not just this particular one, but it's something that needs to be checked. So we're going to start off by removing uh, this original sealing assembly. So on this one here, you're going to have a couple little caps here that you're going to remove. Take a screwdriver, stick them in there uh, to pop those caps off. Remove the filter assembly. That comes down. And then on this particular one, you're going to have four screws. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And Remove these screws. For the, now, for the purpose of this filming, we're actually using a, a uh, driver here to remove all these screws just to speed the process up. Uh, we do suggest using a hand tools and stuff like that, so that way you're not uh, being too aggressive and tightening, over tightening things up and, and, and so forth. So, okay, so now we have all four screws out. We're gonna pull the assembly, ceiling assembly down. And here we go. This is where that cold air dump was right here. As you can see here. So what you do now is a general inspection. Uh, we're gonna look for a couple things. This is the part that we talked about where we're gonna look for uh, ductwork that could be inadequate or maybe uh, loose things, a hole someplace where it shouldn't be. And we'll just point a couple things out here. As I'm taking a look up in here, I can see already that there's a center divider right here. Um, that actually separates the supply air side from the air intake side. Um, this should be a solid piece here to prevent air from leaking from this chamber into this chamber. And I'm just gonna do a quick test and I can tell that if you look, you can see my fingers coming right straight through here. So that tells me already that we do have some leaking going on. This is all loose right here. So unfortunately, this is one of um, maintenance items on RVs that needs to be looked at more often than not. So as I was pulling this cover down, I did notice that we have a lot of, I don't know if you want to call it mold or black mold, but you can see it, it's, it's definitely there. And we had some leaking in here and condensation. And what happens is, and this is something that's very important, when this center divider does leak like this, your air actually, cold air comes in here and starts condensating right down in here and water drips out of the ceiling and into this device or cover, rather than, than the coil itself condensing and evaporator coil to, to allow it to go on the roof and the water to escape. So we're gonna continue to, to pull this controller down. Normally we don't have to pull this down if everything was solid up in here, but again, we're gonna do maintenance. One thing I suggest that we have done is we actually have turned the power off coming to this controller ahead of time because you do have 110 volts in here and you do have 12 volt system in here. So it's just as a safety precaution, turn your breakers off just to make sure that, um, you know, there's nothing gonna happen to you here. So we're gonna pull this aside. Be careful not to pull too much because you do have a lot of connections up in here. And as you can see, it doesn't take much effort and this comes down. Um, this should have been taped up there in solid 100%. Um, basically, it's hard to see here, but you have two pieces here, a piece coming from the top down, a piece coming from the bottom up. And the reason why it's in two pieces is this is adjustable like a slip joint to allow it for different ceiling heights inside of here. Uh, and what they do is the factory puts a piece of foam tape in front of that, but as you can see, in this case, it didn't work. What I'm doing here is I'm actually removing all of the loose foam, this is actually stuck in here pretty good. I could probably leave it, but uh, just the way I am. And I'm gonna make sure this is try to get as much off as I can. I wish I had like a putty knife just to scrape it off. Um, 
And so we actually, when I put foil tape in here, we get a little nice bond, uh, so we don't have any issues if it's separating again. So we got this center divider all cleaned off. Took a little bit to take that foam off of there, and we'll insert that a little bit later here. Or before we do that, we want to check. This is where your ductwork comes down the trailer, and it comes into the air conditioner on each side. Okay. Uh, what you want to do is get up in here with a flashlight and so forth, and look in here. Uh, make sure that your ductwork is all wide open and clear. Um, that's not crushed at all. Uh, this particular unit, Grand Design, they actually have some inserts in here to keep that from uh, collapsing, which is a good thing. Um, and so uh, right now, actually, everything looks pretty good up in here. Uh, but that ductwork actually comes all, you see my fingers over here? It actually comes way over here, uh, which is good. Um, but with that center divider leaking, that was actually, it was coming into here. So that was, that was not a good thing. So all looks good on the supply side. We're going to take a look here now at uh, where our wiring comes into the air conditioning area. They did a nice job in sealing that up there. We're going to open up the package here. We're going to pull out the tape and the hardware and stuff like that. So we do include eight feet of two inch wide foil tape in the kit. Uh, on the Furion, we're going to use this for basically to do repair work um, on here because we don't need to seal anything else up. So it's the tape is provided as an extra measure for you to do some uh, repair work on there. So let's go ahead and grab this center divider. Let's get it up here. There's no up or down for this. As you can see, it's fairly pliable. We're gonna put it in and what we're gonna do is gonna slide up as far as we can and into the corners. It's kind of like a, a press and fit application. Um, and just do the best you can. Probably need to do one side at a time. It's actually hole in there. So let's grab a piece of foil tape and we'll just let's go nice and slow. Let's pull this up here and let's put a piece across. And the reason why I'm cutting short pieces right now is because we want to make sure it's in the right spot first. Again, because you can see we're pushing this up here. That's that's important to get a nice tight seal. Let's go on the other side and do the same thing. Push that on up, push it back if you can, and apply your tape. So now it's somewhat in position. Now we need to seal all the way down here around. This is foam up here in this particular model. Uh, some of the new ones do not have foam there. It's actually a, a metal bottom. So you can actually then tape right to the top there too. But that's why we make sure this is pushed up tight to get again, get that nice tight seal. Okay, we're gonna continue along here and hit the sides here. Again, I'm gonna use longer pieces of tape because we want them to have a good connection. Get down to the bottoms, right into the joints and seal that across. This is where you just need to take your time and do a good job. And hopefully you only have to do this once. to the other side and kind of repeat the process. If you do happen to run out of tape or you've got a lot of repair work to do, you can go to any hardware store and get foil tape. They use it in the HVAC industry, uh, so it's readily available. Now we're going to follow along that long seam. Now, there's one thing that, you know, you'll notice as you're doing this, that this top still isn't real, real sturdy. 
And the reason being is there's actually a piece of foam up here on some Furion models, this specific one does. Uh, so, I mean, I pushed this up as high as I can. Um, and, and I mean, it still can move. So will it, will it blow during operations? You know, I'm not 100% sure, I hope not. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the backside, try to run a piece of tape up and then onto the air conditioner itself. There's actually a, a plastic base or bottom on here. Right here is where the fan is. There's not a lot we can do there, uh, but at least we can get some support over here. So we're just gonna go like this, up to the top and just push it in as much as you can to get a some bite or at least a seal on there. And we're gonna kind of work around and see how this looks. So now I can look and see, we're having some flexing, but it's not going anywhere. One thing you don't want to have is loose ends because you can have some vibration noise and then you'll be wondering where that came from and they're hard to find that. So just make sure all the ends are pushed down nice and tight. You know, this is your air intake side. So you have air going up through here and you have, this is a pressure side or your supply side. So air, cold air conditioner is coming out of the air conditioner right here and it's going to hit this point and it's going to choose to go left or right. And it's also going to put added pressure on here. So what you don't want is the air to, to find a way to sneak through this center divider into this section. So that separation between these two cavities is very crucial. So now we have it all sealed up or we feel pretty confident everything is sealed up here. We're going to take a look at the four mounting bolts uh, that hold the air conditioner physically to the roof. And I just grabbing a hold of them, I can tell that, you know, they're tight. Uh, but you can actually check, there's, there's little spacers up inside here that will tell you if you're at the correct thickness as far as the gasket smash or what do you want to call it. And everything actually looks really good here. Uh, sometimes I've gone to places where you can actually just wiggle those uh, or turn them out by hand. So everything here looks really good. And uh, next thing we're going to inspect is going to be uh, is this gasket right here. Uh, this gasket is actually going to act as a seal when we put our base plate on. So we're going to go ahead now that we, you know, did all work in here. We're going to put the control box back up in here. So we're going to kind of line things right up. It fits into place. It's little tabs that locks it in. I shouldn't say lock it in, but it finds its position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tape across here, just a foil tape, um, just to hold it up there, make life a little bit easier for us. Um, if this center divider was in really good shape, I didn't have to pull this controller down, I would have put this tape across here right from right, right, right away and just pull the screws through the tape and then it would be right in place. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at now that we move the controller, we want to make sure this is right here, this wire. Uh, and it's actually marked free sensor. This is a important piece of all air conditioners. Um, this, this is a uh, temperature sensor that's going to go up and attach to the coil and the job of that is to actually turn the compressor uh, on and off so your coil doesn't freeze up. Um, and in the Furion, in this particular Furion model, right here is your temperature sensor. This senses room temperature. It's on the air intake side, okay? So um, that is important to make sure that these two items are uh, there and uh, working properly. Now we're gonna kind of tuck these wires out of the way as much as we can, uh, try to get as much free air up into that air conditioner. So why are we tucking all these wires kind of out of the way? It's just, just remind yourself that this um, temperature probe for your, your uh, thermostat needs, needs to be uh, out in the open here and uh, accessible to airflow. So in the kit, uh, these are the mounting uh, screws that are needed. You're gonna have six longer screws. That's gonna actually gonna hold the base plate up to the, up to the uh, air conditioner. And then you have four shorter screws, um, the Phillips heads also that hold a cover to the base plate. Okay, we're gonna install the base plate. So we do have directional arrow on the base plate, arrow to the rear of the RV. That's towards the back. And what we're gonna do 
So we're gonna just run this through right here, line it up and get it started. Do not run all the screws up until you have them all started. work your way around. I find it's easier by starting on the air intake side because you can physically see where the holes are at. It just makes it a little easier to get it lined up. When you get to the back, you cannot see that anymore because it's covered by the plate. Now, what you can do is just grab your hand, just push it up. You heard it pop up there. Just kind of assist it. And now you can go around and tighten the two back ones. Leave the four front ones loose yet at this point. The filter on all my RVAC silencer products uh, is very unique. Uh, what's unique about the filter is it's not a piece of foam. Um, material that crushes under pressure through airflow. Uh, this is actually a three-dimensional filter. Uh, when you look at the end grain of this filter, it actually looks corrugated like a cardboard box uh, kind of structure, it's three-dimensional. Uh, it's coarse on one side, it's fine on the other. So as the air flows through it from coarse to fine, that's what creates a static electricity and holds that dirt in place not through air restriction like some other filters do. This is a high flow filter. Uh, the real nice unique thing about this, it's a true lifetime filter. Uh, you can actually vacuum this while this is up in place or loosen the four screws up, take it down, wash it in soap and water, uh, let it air dry and reinstall. Uh, just make sure you don't use it wet. So the original filter that's in on this assembly is held in by a couple little tabs, but what happens is you can see here, it actually gets sucked up inside of the air conditioning unit. There's no frame or no structure to it. Uh, that's the downfall with some of the, um, the original assemblies uh, on air conditioners. Because again, it's important to have structure there. And if you notice that my filter is on a frame, it's rigid, it's not going anywhere and physically getting screwed into place. So let's uh, go ahead and get this installed plastic plate at the top, put over the top the keyholes, slide it back, and it's hung by itself there. And now we can go and snug those four screws up. This one slid back just a little bit. Let's go back and just tighten this one back up. Here we go, perfect, just like that. And you see, now the air has to go through that filter and cannot get around it. It is tight to that ceiling, to that base plate, and that's what we wanna have. Uh, by the way, I was talking about that gasket that was behind here. As you can see, this is blocking that, that uh, if you wanna call it cold air dump off. That's where you had the option to be able to open and close that vent. Um, that's where we wanna make sure that seal there is, is in good shape so that we, this, when this goes up tight, we have no air leaks. Again, where there's air leaks, there's noise leaks, okay? The cover is designed to go on one way only. Again, arrow to the rear of the coach. Uh, if you actually try to put it on the wrong way, this way here, the holes in the side will disappear. It's keyed, it only fits one way. So it actually goes just like so. Okay, one thing I wanna show you that, and this is where some people wanna turn it this way. Uh, by putting the, the cover on this way, this is, by the way, the correct way to do it. What we're doing is we're drawing air into the cover, through the cover, and then up into the air conditioner. And what we're doing is then sound comes out of that air conditioner. We're absorbing that sound here with sound absorbing materials here and here. Uh, also, the next thing that we're doing, that's what makes it quiet, but what we're doing is also getting rid of that straight air in turbulence. Uh, believe it or not, you cannot condition turbulence. So. By bringing that air in through the cover, it's actually lining it all up to get condition 100%. So that actually makes your air conditioner a lot more efficient too. So we're gonna again, put the arrow to the rear of the coach, opposite side of the filter with that grill area and put it over the top. Nice thing, it's usually got a pretty snug fit here and it's staying up by itself. In this case, grab our four screws. Hold the, the cover tight to the ceiling and get them started with your fingers and all the way around. Thank you. 
again, we're pushing this up. We wanna try to get it tight to the ceiling as we can. Uh, not all cases, you can get it perfectly tight, but we do the best we can. Looks a little nicer when it's got a tighter connection there. Got them all started. Yeah, we're just gonna go around and snug up the screws. You don't have to crank these down at all. Really, all they're doing is holding that cover in place. They're slotted. Uh, there's nothing on them besides um, just pushing a cover in place. And that completes our installation. One thing I want to uh, let everybody know, as you can tell, the AC is running right now. We're shooting this video uh, in normal tone, normal voice. Uh, enjoying the airflow, by the way. Um, the owner of the RV says, wow, to the airflow. Um, I will tell you that some cell phones, I know a lot of people want to use DME beaters on them and stuff like that, um, that there's, there's certain apps and so forth on cell phones that do not cancel the noise canceling microphone. It will not give you accurate readings. The only thing that I can say that is accurate is are the ears on the side of your head, unfortunately. So if you're happy, we're happy. That's the number one thing, folks, is when you don't have to chase that TV up and down from 7 to 30, you can watch TV. You can be on a cell phone talking to somebody, have a normal conversation without having to go outside. Being on a video call with the air conditioning running, that is huge. If you have any questions about, number one, the installation of the RVAC silence or any further questions, questions, comments, anything, please reach out to me at info at wackoproducts.com. Uh, if you're interested in the product, you're not sure what you, works for your rig, send me a picture of the inside ceiling assembly. That's this part right here. That's what I need to see. And verify that you do have a ducted unit with a wall thermostat. Uh, also remember, we do come down from the ceiling two and a quarter inches, okay? So make sure, an example, this here has got a refrigerator and freezer area that we have clearance to all of our items. That's something that's important to watch out for.